Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Ash and I'm the founder of Active Solutions AI. Um, I truly believe that this video has the potential to change a lot of people's lives. Uh, the One of the latest updates in Go High Level, and I know Go High Level has been um, really working on building one of the most sophisticated conversational AI features uh, that any CRM does have. And I think we've gotten to that point with this last update um, for building AI appointment setters, uh, basically bots that can have intellectual and human-like conversations to book appointments onto uh, people's calendars. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and dive in, and I'm going to give a full tutorial and breakdown on how you can build one of these bots for your uh, businesses. So if you if you use Go High Level or if you don't, doesn't matter. This is going to be applicable. Um, and if you don't use Go High Level, I'll definitely include a 30-day uh, free trial uh, link in my description. But let's go ahead and dive in. So if you know any of the previous videos that I have recorded, uh, I used to create a bot slightly differently. So for example, um, within the workflow section or automation section of Go High Level, you have this conversational AI feature that looks like this. Now, if I zoom out, you see this spider web. Um, don't let this scare you because the, the new way is actually much, much easier. So we used to have individual actions, right? That would have one response or one type of question to ask. And then based on the person's response to that question, it would send it to another place like a qualifying question too, right? Or it would time out because the person didn't respond and we would have like a follow-up or whatever it might be, okay? So this is what the old uh, snapshot that I used to sell actually held. Now, one of the updates and... If you are a snapshot user, so if you've purchased a snapshot for me before, I'm actually going to be including the new version um, in the snapshot. So message me in school. You're probably in my school community. And uh, let me know if you have purchased the snapshot in the past. And I will actually give you the new one uh, for free. But if you haven't uh, and you want a shortcut, you can always uh, purchase the snapshot. But I don't um, care if you give me money or not. I actually would prefer you just watch the tutorial and build it yourself. But if you want a shortcut, we also provide the snapshot. So we go in here. Um, I call this advanced AI and uh, GPT 3.0. So the reason why I call it GPT 3.0 is because we already have a GPT 2.0 bot and the next number up is three. So this was the, the, the next place to go. So this is kind of what it looks like. You have an action in here you can use, and it's called, if you type in conversational AI or just conversational, or whatever you want to do, you'll see this uh, appointment booking conversational AI bot that is currently in beta mode. Even though it's in beta mode, this is the best bot, in my opinion, um, on in Go High Level. And I'm going to show you exactly how it works. So whenever you open this up, it's actually pre-programmed to book directly onto calendars, which is awesome. So if you look over here on the right, you open it up. Um, so it'll show you the calendar that you want to, to book onto. Now, I personally like to send links because I feel like there's something there's a different level of intent to people who make the decision to fill out information, fill out a form, and then book their own appointment. Um, and I think the the show rates are, well, I don't think. Actually, we, we ran a couple tests. Data shows that the show rates are significantly higher for people that book themselves, and you end up actually talking to a larger number of people. So I like to send links. But for the use case here, it's... Um, it is actually, so for example, right now it says calendar introduction call. And then it, the prompting says you are an appointment setter for, um, and we also utilize custom values. And I'll get into this a little bit later to write the prompt so that we can template it and we can actually duplicate it into multiple different accounts and recreate multiple bots for multiple different clients. If you're a marketing agency or an AI agency, and it takes just a couple of minutes to fill in the information that you need to fill in. But um, if I go in here, uh, it, it says you are an appointment setter for custom values company name. Your job is to ask a series of questions and book an appointment on the calendar. I could change this. I could change the objective and say your job is to send uh, X, Y, and Z link or, or to send a booking link after asking a series of questions. Do not book directly on the calendar or suggest appointment times, right? Um, and then I could say, here is the link. So I can actually, and, and we tried this multiple times. Um, so if you want to send them a survey or a form, or you want to send them the booking link for them to book, you can actually change the objective by editing the prompt in the personality section, or even in the additional instruction section. Um, I like to do it at the top just because it's like the first objective that you're giving the AI, but you can actually change the objective and it will stop booking directly on the calendar. Um, so right now at the moment, this bot is meant to book on the calendar, but you can make it do other things if you want. But to keep it easy, we're just going to keep this uh, simple use case. Now, 
Prompting is going to be your best friend when it comes to any bot, really. You can make any bot sophisticated if you know how to prompt. Um, a lot of people have been saying in the past that, you know, go high level for the last year. You know, their bots suck. They don't work. They don't book appointments, whatever. That's because people don't know how to prompt. Um, every bot that go high level has came out with, I have been able to prompt and make it a good enough bot to seem human like and actually book appointments. It's just that people don't know how to prompt. Um, these bots aren't, uh, we're, they try to make it as user friendly as possible, but you know, people aren't prompt engineers, uh, unfortunately. So, um, you put the, the personality and then we have a, obviously we have a personality trait custom value here. Uh, and then you'll break that down, but the additional instruction is where a lot of the magic happens. So you have, uh, your name. So you're telling the bot what their name is. And we have a custom value for that about the company conversation style, conversation examples. Um, and I'll go over this in a little bit. And then the conversation guidelines. And we put a lot of information here. Um, use phrases like got it for sure makes sense. This makes it seem more human, but we still tell it to make sure it still addresses what they say. Uh, don't say these, just say these phrases, give feedback or little bits of advice along the way, et cetera. That'll make it seem more human as well. Um, and then you have the maximum number of messages that it can send back and forth. Now, the cool thing about this and why it's different than the other one is that this one prompt controls the entire conversation. So you don't need multiple different actions, right? So you have one prompt that literally controls the entire conversation for 15 messages up to 25 messages. Um, I think 15 is a good range. Usually if it's, if a conversation is going up to 25 messages, it's probably because the person found out it was an AI and is trying to break the bot and just keeps going back and forth. So I would put a cap on it, 15 messages. You have a timeout value, which we usually make a one day or 24 hours. And then the channel that you would like it to communicate with. Now, the cool thing about this is you can use Facebook, Instagram, and SMS. These are great for Facebook and Instagram bots, by the way. Um, and I'll actually go into why I like this version of the AI uh, over other versions of AI that they have in, in go high level as well. But, um, here's the, so we have 24 hours SMS, and then you have the branches, right? So you have timeout appointment was booked appointment was not booked for these scenarios specifically. What this means basically is after it's reached the cap of messages. So after 15 messages or 15 exchanges have went back and forth, if the appointment was not booked, it's going to go here and you can make some stuff happen. If the appointment was booked, it's going to go here. You can make stuff happen. If the person didn't respond, that's a timeout. You could probably just send a go-to action back to here so that it follows up or whatever it might be. All right. Perfect. So that's the breakdown here. Um, now, the reason why I like this AI better than the autopilot AI and the settings which is the bot you would find back here. They also have another uh, a version two, by the way, where you can create uh, bots for different scenarios. But uh, I'm going to use this one for now. So they have an autopilot bot. This means it is on all the time and it's just running through the account. It's going to respond to everything, uh, depending on the channel that you have it hooked uh, connected to. The, the bot that I showed you in the workflow is very similar to the autopilot bot, but you can control it with certain scenarios. So if an appointment is booked or if a tag is added or whatever it might be, we can remove it from the workflow and the bot will stop. In this case, in the autopilot uh, case, you cannot do that. So I like the level of control that you can have over the workflows. Um, I think it's very helpful. And I think there's a, it's actually very significant um, because there's a lot of use cases where you're going to need to turn it on and off. Now, if we go to the custom values, if you're not familiar with custom values, that is, um, that is okay. If you've been using go high level for a little bit, you know how important custom values are and um, how much easier it makes our lives. So, but if you're not, basically you have this query, right? Or this key right here, which houses information. So for example, for appointment link, right? I put a value here. I can edit this and I can add a value and it's going to populate the information. So if I copy this code, I can paste this code anywhere uh, and go high level will register what the actual value of that code is. So for example, business information, if I put in here, uh, I am a gym that specializes in transformations, right? Or, or maybe you want to say that maybe you want to say X, Y, and Z transformation gym is a gym that specializes in transformations, right? And I could put that in the value section. I could copy this code, paste it um, anywhere, and go high level knows that it wants to populate the actual business information. Um, it, it's, it, this makes it easy for us to template our conversational AI. So what we do is we want to make sure we have the appointment link. And this is if you're, you know, sending 
the appointment link or sending a survey or whatever it might be, uh, business information, the company name, conversation examples. And um, this is just prompting one-on-one. It's good to give examples. So if you have um, a certain way that you like to speak, right? So like if you're a gym, it's okay to be a little less formal and say things like wanna, for example, instead of want to. So W-A-N-N-A. Uh, you can you can speak like that and it comes off as more human and personable. And it's probably going to increase the likelihood that the other person responds. You don't want it to be overly formal and very punctual because it, it's, it just yells AI. So give conversation examples. I usually just um, tell Chad GPT to give me 10, you know, relatively informal but professional examples of conversation where people would think it is a human or whatever uh, and then give it whatever niche that I'm in and then ChatGPT will spit out 10 options. I copy that whole thing and I paste all 10 options here. Conversation style, uh, whether you want to be you know, empathetic or understanding or whatever it might be. Name of the AI assistant, the personality traits, qualifying questions one and two, and then the trigger message. Now, we have all of these that we pasted in the actual prompt itself which we saw earlier. Now, if we're going through this prompt, um, you'll see that I spelled out all of the custom values, right? Throughout this whole thing, even down to the qualifying questions. And I have a place where it says, your goal is to ask the qualifying questions and then start booking an appointment. If they answer, do not ask the same question more than once and only ask one question per message. And then I have the qualifying questions here, right? So theoretically, I could duplicate this into a different account and I could come right in here Let's go to custom values. Let's say I just onboard a new client. I come in here. I fill out their information for them, right? I have their appointment link, their business information, their company name, whatever it might be. And then when I update these, it automatically is going to populate that information in the actual prompt itself. So you can make one baseline and templated prompt with all of these custom values. And anytime you want to create a new or you onboard a new business that you want to create a new bot for, all you have to do is update this information and you have a new bot for a new business. And it is an expert in that industry specifically. And it is assistant. It is an assistant for that business specifically within minutes. All you have to do is fill out this information. So I truly think this is going to change the game. Um, I think this is uh, one of the biggest updates in conversational AI for go high level it, since since it's came out with anything. This is going to be a huge game changer. Um, if you own a marketing agency, this is a huge add-on to your current company. And it's very easy to learn how to use it and to duplicate it into multiple accounts. If you don't have a business or you want to start a marketing agency, or maybe you want to start an AI agency, this is a really good place to start. If you look in the description below, I provide a 30 day free trial for go high level. And if you use your 30 days wisely, you can get really, really freaking good at this. And you could probably even onboard your first client. I also have a 100% free course where I go through how to start your own AI agency, how to run ads, how to do cold outreach, uh, how to get clients, sales, all of it, how to build the bot. Um, well, this is going to be a new video that I add in there as well, because I think this bot is going to be more useful than the old bot that we used to build. But um, I think the use case of this is uh, there's just so many scenarios where, where it's useful. Um, I think if, if you're a brick and mortar business owner or just a business owner in general, maybe you don't have an agency, it's really easy to just throw this into your business and uh, right then and there, you, you have your own AI assistant. So hopefully this is helpful. Thank you guys for watching. Again, all of that stuff is going to be in the description. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to you know shoot a comment. One last thing uh, as well. The, one, the biggest thing that you're going to want to do to trigger all of this is when you go into the workflow, just make sure you have uh, the trigger of whatever sparks a new lead coming into your system, and it's going to start that conversation. So update the custom values. Make sure you have your trigger set, and you are good to go. Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.